joins us today. It's a great big weekend, our first weekend of roller coaster. You can be seated. How many of y'all have had a great time so far? Hi, everyone. It's Doreen. I am really excited to introduce to you today a man who has come out of a church that features roller coasters and Pac-Man on stage and a female pastor and all sorts of promises that are not in the Bible. And that's just the beginning. So I think you're going to really find today's episode kind of shocking and, and probably fascinating too by the kind of entertainment that's being offered in some of these false churches instead of giving the word scripture. Our guest today is Sam Van Horn, and he's the cousin of Paul Massey, who you met with his wife, Emily, on the two videos that we did about they used to work for Joyce Meyer. The link to their videos is below. And Sam used to attend with his cousin, Paul, and then later with Emily, the Faith Church in Missouri with the senior pastor, David Crank. And then when David passed away, Sam's father married David Crank Sr.'s wife. Is that, am I saying that correctly? That's correct. Okay. And so then Sam became the stepbrother to the man we're going to be seeing today, who's David Crank Jr., who's taken over pastorship of Faith Church and who's responsible for these wild roller coasters and Pac-Man and these wild twisting of scriptures. Um, as always, we're doing this video as truth and love, we pray for false teachers, just like people prayed for me when I was a false teacher. We pray for the people who follow this church, and we're not here to gossip about them or anything unbiblical. We're here to expose darkness as we're commanded to do. So Sam, thank you so much for being with me today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Doreen. It's a, it's a pleasure because when I first saw the video of the roller coaster on stage, and Emily told me that's the church she used to go to. My mind was so blown that I just couldn't even comprehend it. So is this kind of an escalation of the deception of that church? Or was it always when you were a kid looking back, was it always just kind of crazy like that? It's always been crazy. Um, but it, now it's it's more entertaining for the culture. So they'll, they'll have just, it just gets more extravagant each time because mm -hmm. um, they got to keep the people who they are trying to draw to come in. So it just needs to be more and more each time. Um, so it's definitely morphed over the years. Uh, I can remember. So I was raised as a Pentecostal. Um, my dad was a Pentecostal preacher um, under First Four Square. He, he taught me about Jesus. That's where I learned about Jesus. That's where I learned about the gospel. Your dad married David Crank Sr.'s widow yes, when he right. passed away. And so did you then live with David Crank Jr.? No, he was he was already he had already taken over the church. And I I got to see some of the behind scenes and go to like the lake house and see their hundred thousand dollar boat and go to their house and see their humongous pool and ground pool with mm -hmm with dolphins in the middle sprouting water all over the place and just extravagant living and mm. all, 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 all of this stuff. And that's financed by people's tithes and offerings to the church. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, and they're not, they're not shy to let the people know that they know that they have them manipulated so much that they have you believe that this is actually going to bless you if you give to this man. You, you know, and if you don't give to this man, then there's no way possible that you'll ever get a blessing from God. The Bible said you'll know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So today, here at Faith Church, I want to endeavor to teach you some principles, some easy, practical applications to show you in the banner years over the year of 2017, 18, 19, and 2020, they're going to be the most phenomenal four years of your life. But you got to mix your faith with it. you got to put your mouth on it you got to get to the root of your problem tonight. So give it up for, for that. That's cool. Money. Yes. So the congregation knows that the money is going to go to finance these pools and this extravagant lifestyle. And yet they're also told that God won't bless them if they don't right. ante up. Yes. And wow. if so, 
I've, I've, I've heard Junior say this uh, quite a few times. Um, give until it hurts. Don't wow. just give the 10%. And then, you, you know, sometimes uh, they'll, they'll use the, yeah, the, the widow going in and paying her last yeah. two copper coins. How and, do I get more money? Sow more seed into the kingdom. And that is the way you go from the world way to the word way. I'm telling you, you're a child of the most high God. And yes, you were a single mom. And yes, they lied on you. And yes, you've went through depression. But I'm telling you that this oppression and this suppression is off of you. And God is going to meet all of your needs according to his riches and glory. And there's not a lack of money in the world or in heaven. It's just a lack in you. But right now, we're going from lack to abundance. God, we see what you've left us, and we claim it right now in the name of Jesus, and we thank you that this harvest is coming into our life, and we have a supernatural inheritance that's coming to us, and it's coming to us right now in the name of Jesus, and everybody said amen. Come on, give God praise right now, everybody. Just, just thank God for what he did. Thank God for what he's doing. He wants to bless you. Now, I'd be amiss if I didn't tell you right now that this is your opportunity to do that. There's envelopes in front of you. You know, on the screens, you can see the text to give, and the campus pastors are coming in just a moment to pray with you and, 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 and let you go in a second. But I'm here to tell you that today's the day that your heart may be beating, and you know, I, I am a tither, but I'm just returning the rental car. I need to become an investor. If that's you right now, pick up that envelope, and you go ahead and do it. Maybe it's the first time that you've ever used your credit card. You've used it to buy tickets to a game. You used it to buy a television but you've never said, God, I'm gonna give this $1,000. I wanna give whatever, whatever the name, you know, when, when we, we see the story in the Bible and the woman, Jesus said, this woman gave more than anyone. It wasn't that she gave more than anyone, it's that she gave all that she had. So whatever it is right now that you know you're supposed to invest in this kingdom. West Palm, St. Louis, now's your time to do it. Get that envelope, open that up, and sow that seed. And as you sow that seed today, God's gonna change your life. Some of you want a text to give. Some of you that are online are going to do it. And I promise you, this is a weekend where God's gonna supernaturally bless you as you sow that seed. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. Give your campus pastor a hand as he comes up right now. God bless you. And then, you know, sometimes uh, they'll, they'll use the, yeah, the, the widow going in and paying her last yeah. two copper coins and... They don't even get that that was to point out the false system mm -hmm. that they're actually conducting. You, you, you know, they, they turn it around to say, here, look, this means that, you, you know, if you're not giving this much, then you don't have enough faith. And, and, and these people go out of there just beaten because they'll, they'll, be, they'll be lifted up from, from the little TED talk that they get. Mm -hmm. And then they go out into the parking lot and they see that they have a 1994 Honda Civic and they're like, I don't, I don't have enough faith. What, what am I doing wrong? What do I have to do? And the man of God will accommodate them so well in saying, well, what you need to do is you need to give more money. Oh, really? You're not, oh. you're, you're, you're not giving enough. That's why you're not receiving enough. Oh, and it, it's, it's the same thing that like. Joyce Meyer and mm -hmm. TJ, oh, they, they all say the same thing. If something bad happens to you, it's because you don't have enough faith. Well, what do you say to the, the woman who had a miscarriage or their, you know, a, a couple's a child dies, you, you know, from some of it's because you don't have enough faith and it's they just, just uh, well, they put it back on them. They, it can't, it can't be me because I'm teaching you the truth. It's got to mm -hmm. be you and your faith and your walk. Um, it, it's something you do. It can't be, you know, me, the, the, the preacher, the, the apostle. It, it can't be. It, yeah. it, it has to be you. And that can shipwreck people's faith, too. Right, sure. I mean, you, me and Paul are, are very rare as far as, and, and Emily and, and some of my other family um, being brought out of that because... When someone usually comes to the realization that they're being deceived, and a lot of times it's like, my whole life I've been deceived? Mm -hmm. What? What? Um, the majority of them are just, I don't want anything to do with religion. I don't want anything to do with Christianity. I've been robbed for 30 years, and then they leave me high and dry with nothing, and then say it's all my fault. Yeah. 
It's just, it's, it's criminal. I mean, the only um, thing that we can lean on is that the Bible says that teachers will be judged more, more harshly sure. than, than non-teachers. So, I mean, God knows what they're doing. And it's one more reason why we pray for them to wake up and repent while there's still time, because um, they're not going to be getting any blessings where they're going if they continue with manipulating people like this and twisting scripture. And like you said, saying that they're speaking for God when they're speaking for the enemy. Okay. Is your father still involved with charismatic churches? No, actually, um, my dad has uh, been coming to my church. Oh, I, I, praise I was God. Talking, I was talking to him uh, a little while ago and he might get on me for this, but I was like, dad, you, you know, you're a lot more reformed than you lead on. And he was like, yeah, I know, but you can't tell anybody. No. <laughs> So um, he's not going to the crank church anymore. No, he he okay. he saw the deception just like all of us. Mm -hmm. um, we we were we were deceived. Is he still married to Sharon? No. Okay. Oh wow. So this is really interesting. So did you hang out with David Crank Jr. at all since you were related? Um, there was a couple of times where I would go down to like the lake house and he would be around and doing all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, he was he's he's older and and so i was younger we were in our teens and stuff like that so like i said i hung out with anthony most um, okay but uh junior was always with senior because mm. they were grooming him to take over and mm -hmm. so he had to be involved right yeah that's why i i, I tell uh, a lot of people w whenever given the opportunity you don't even have to go in and and hear um what the person has to say just go into their bookstore and see who they affirm yeah, that's and, true. And he, he has he has you know, billboards all around town with him and his his arm around Joel Olstein and everything like that. And it's <laughs> that guy's message is so false. I mean, living your best life now, then it's impossible for you to be a Christian. Yeah, because perfection waits for Christians. That's Tell right. me how that you can beat perfection. So if you're living your best life now, then what's next is not heaven, but hell. Yeah, it's very new age. New age was always about improving yourself, about getting more money, what they call abundance to kind of soften it. Uh, not the biblical term of abundance or abundant life. And just, I mean, it's it's deception. It's all got the same author. Yeah, it's, it's the church has tolerance now and that produces indifference to truth. And, and, and people aren't trained to know how to build their defenses up against being deceived. You, you know, I was never trained. I was never told to open up my Bible and read it. And if I was told to open up my Bible and read it, we would do like Bible roulette and we would just open it up. And that was our verse for the day. And if it was a terrible one, you, you know, like God came and, you know, smited these people and everything. You know, ah, let's flip to another one. You, you know, let's try yeah. to find something more uplifting. That was about the like the 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 direction that we were given to you you know be a stronger christian mm. so there was no bible studies or any not kind of small groups all. looking at scripture not that i remember mm -hmm. um, what was it was it about socializing was it about potlucks is it about partying what was the congregation life like um it goes back to what i said before um gaining the byproducts of christianity that's that's what it was all about it was all about self-desire self-fulfillment so self i just want to hear a good message that tickles my ears i don't want to get pounded i don't want to hear rebuke uh, rebuke reproof and and exhortation i want to hear something that makes me feel good and so that's why we would all go there to feel good and to get that next high uh, that spiritual high so to speak and that's why we would have to go from so We'd have Sunday Sunday mornings and Sunday nights, and I believe at Faith it was um, Tuesday nights. Um, and then any other time was wide open, and Charismatics and Word of Faith are really big and having revivals. So we would just go around, and there would be always someone around in St. Louis because this is such a big cesspool for Charismatic and Word of Faith. I don't think a lot of people realize um, that... Like our church sits right in between a, a cares a word of faith with 10,000 members. And then on the other side, a mile away is Joyce Meyer Ministries, mm. you, you know? So, I mean, it's all right in there. 
so we would just travel around to get the next high and you, you know we i i remember um it would be me my brother and 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 darnell and uh we'd go around a lot and um we, we'd sit in there and if people didn't start shouting and rolling around and screaming and you know doing all this we would we would leave the place and we would say man i didn't get nothing out of that can you talk to us about the contention that some charismatics have that the the, there needs to be this atmosphere and that it needs to be holy spirit filled so there would be people that would they would they would go there and they would they would get that experience and then they would have to continue to chase that experience every single time. So then it became all about that. It became all about the experience. Um, and so you would have to get this new spiritual high, but they, they don't even look at it as joy. They look at it as an experiential high and they base all their Christianity off of that. They about experiences. Off of the, the experiences that they mm -hmm. have. So then you, you no longer, um, need that the actual revelation of of jesus christ in scripture all you need is this person's experience my own experience my own truth the, you know this person's experience and you just kind of feed off of that and if you don't get that experience again then it's dead oh wow well for those who are watching this and who are new to coming out of a charismatic kind of belief system or maybe who are still in it. Can you talk about what experiences are like when your mind is renewed because you're grounded in scripture? It's as if you're wandering through the desert and you, you've, been, you've been looking for water and food because you're about ready to die. And then you finally, you finally hear it. You, you finally hear the word spoken correctly and, and it feeds you and you're just give me more. I need more. I got to yes. have more. And it's, it's like, you've been malnourished wandering through the desert your entire life. And then you hear it. And then it's like, oh, I've been missing this my whole life. Thank you, Lord, for revealing your, your truth to me. Um, thank you for enlightening my mind through your Holy spirit. Thank you for all of these things. It's, it's, it's like nothing you've ever had before. Mm -hmm. Um, because you've never heard the truth spoken rightly and, and correctly. Um, and, and you just know that, it, I'd like to say to them, um, run, run like you've never run before. Go home, open up your Bible and start reading, start reading in John. You have to know about Jesus Christ before you can get the byproducts. You, you have to, you, you have to understand who, who, who Jesus Christ is, what the gospel is all about, and, and who you are before you're saved. That's, that's where people get all messed up. They, 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 they already think that they have our, our innate goodness is inside of them, that they're, they're, they're good people because they do this or they give here or they go to church or they... Yeah, they it's just that different worldview. Like you, you were really eloquent when you pointed out that the worldview of the charismatic church, like New Age is that it starts with the premise that we're good people and that what we do is important, where the biblical worldview is that we're born sinners, and when we're saved, we want to do good works, but we're not saved by the good works. That's right. So just this like 180-degree opposite worldviews, and they just can never mesh or can, they can't understand each other. And that's why that scripture from the Pentateuch all the way till the very end in, in Revelation, it talks about these false teachers and to beware and to stand ready and to, to, to not go away from the truth, to feed on the truth, to, to constantly be seeking Christ and what it says in the, in the Bible. Not, not what, quote unquote, this self-proclaimed apostle is telling you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, they desperately try. They desperately try to mesh them together, but it's it, it's not. And and that's why it's you build your best defenses ag ag against being deceived with knowledge, with knowledge of the mm -hmm. Word of God. That that's 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 how you build your defenses up against that. Uh, uh, you, you, you know, Paul told Timothy to preach the Word. Uh, you you got to have the Word, or that's you're right. you're just going to be exposed to every deception that mm -hmm. satan has and i mean he throws the most that he has at the church 
when I was in the new age, I was the top selling new age author. And so I was giving huge workshops and they were entertainment driven too. We'd have skits and plays and, and all sorts of kind of lavish sets and costumes that people would be wearing. Um, just like we're seeing at David Crank Jr.'s church with his roller coasters and his Pac-Man and, and such. Um, and it was because I was bored. You know, honestly, I knew that at the time I was doing all that entertainment because I was bored. And I know it was because I wasn't teaching anything of substance. Right. And and yet with the Bible, I never get bored. Do you? I mean, it's just no. every time you'd read the same passage, the Holy Spirit will illuminate something different. And as your life evolves, you'll get convicted about different things. And and I love being convicted by the Holy Spirit because it's part of the sanctification process. And it, it really um, shows how the Holy Spirit's working on our hearts. Um, just a whole different way of looking at teaching. Mm -hmm. that, that whole, like you said, TED Talk, uh, entertainment-driven model versus really interacting with the true Holy Spirit through Scripture, the, who's right. the author of Scripture. Yeah, I did. You said the Holy Spirit. I most of those those people have have no idea of who the Holy Spirit is. Um, if anyone of the Godhead is blasphemed, it would be the Holy Spirit is blasphemed mm. the most. Mm. Um, just abused on on how that that they that they speak of the Holy Spirit, and they just. The, the spirit can give you these things. The spirit tells me this. The spirit does this, all, all this kind of stuff. And it's just, if you take, let's, I'll have to go back a couple of years. Let's say 10 years. 10 years ago, if if you would take a person and you would take out of the, the Christian biblical context, if, if you would take them and they said that they were hearing voices in their head, they would be considered to go into an insane asylum. Mm-hmm. But you have these people up there that are definitely worthy to be in an asylum um, that are saying that they're hearing all these voices and people are just affirming it and saying that it's okay. Not only okay, but they're craving it, aren't they? Because they want their ego stroked. They want to oh, be yeah. told that they're special. They want to be told that they'll be successful. I mean, it's no different than getting a psychic reading. Yeah, sure. It absolutely is. It's the exact same thing. It's it's bizarre it's it's how that it's it's crept in to dominate the church like this i it just is it's, it's mind-boggling and i i thank the lord for um men like my pastors men like rc sproul and mm -hmm. um john MacArthur and phil johnson and every the, the, that are every day fighting for the truth yeah. writing books about truth wars and you you know and and really trying to get people back on track with understanding that this what they're teaching is not biblical at all mm. it's it's made up that's that's what heresy is it's a concoction of someone's self-designed beliefs and and that's that's what it is it's a heretical talk and it's it's scary and and again i if, if I could say anything to uh, any of my brothers and sisters in Christ who are in there who are being browbeat and drugged through the mud, not to be scared. You, yeah. you, you don't be scared. They, they, that, that, that man can't do anything to you. Um, run to Christ. Run to the Word of God and open it up and read it mm -hmm. and, and, and repent and just get out of there. I, I, I just... Well, it's the only way that we can know we're deceived. I mean, because otherwise people will say, well, why can't there be prophets today? Why can't there be apostles? Why can't someone speak a word of the Lord over me? You know, it feels so good, that experiential viewpoint. Um, and the only way that we can know what's wrong with that is to compare what the biblical prophets, which mm -hmm. were needed, Hebrews 1 tells us they, they aren't needed anymore, um, because in Jesus, you know, God spoke through his son, and the canon's closed, so we don't need prophets anymore. Everything's been said. Um, and, and besides that, even more important, I think, is that these so-called prophets contradict the word of God. Yes, and, absolutely. And right. that's impossible. It's, it, God doesn't contradict himself. Right. 
they'll say little things, you know, they'll say Jesus's name. They'll even affirm that Jesus is real, that, that the Holy Spirit is real, that God is real, um, you know, and they'll, they'll, they'll affirm that the, the Bible is true but they can't teach from it because they don't know it. It's 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 like the, they're on the other end when Jesus is telling a parable and they're like, what is this guy talking about? Yeah, the blind leading the blind. Right. It's one fallen head leading another fallen head. Mm. So scary. I pray that this video would point someone to the real gospel, to Jesus. Watch American Gospel. Uh, it's, a, it's a really good wake-up call also, and we'll have the link to that below. Um, I just pray that this, that God uses this video and your very powerful testimony, Sam, to help someone to have the boldness, like you said, to come out of the word of faith, false teachings, when there's so much pressure to conform and stay there and, and you lose all your friends and you're shunned. And I know what that feels like. It's horrible. Um, but God gives us strength. Yes, he does. Amen to that. He absolutely does. Um, I can remember parking in the back, you, you know, so this, people wouldn't see my car, you, you know, or you, those those little things and everything like that, because then I would be looked at as I don't have enough faith. Mm. Oh, wow. Wow. And so that was a source of shame then? Sure. Yeah. And that's I mean, they, they'll, they'll openly shame you for that. If you wow. don't have these things, it's because you don't have enough faith. Wow. And so you're sitting next to someone who has a ten thousand dollar watch and everything like that and you're you're sitting there in just your regular street clothes which are rags compared to their you know their stuff mm. they're up there with dolce and gabbana and versace suits and all mm. this kind of stuff and just it's all about wealth it's all about that that well that, what do they say about jesus who had no home he didn't have a pillow to put his head on they can't they can't talk about that that is they don't talk about Jesus in that manner. They only talk about the byproducts of Christianity. Wow. They can't talk about how all the apostles and disciples um, were were martyred. Mm -hmm. you, you know, died with nothing. Right. You, you know that 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 Paul was beaten times without number and had to still make his own tents to to be able to fund his ministry. They yeah. don't say anything like that. They 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 have to stay away from that because that will totally deflate their entire message. It's a house of cards. Sure it is. Woo. Sure. Yeah. And uh that's that <laughs> they definitely did that. I, I I can remember um when I was younger going to church camps and um they the evangelist would, would come around and he 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 would claim to have um the the gifts of the apostles, uh, apostolic gifts and um so he he would get up there and he would work the crowd into a frenzy, have the same beat going on and everything, and then he would have the consistent dancers and they would they would come out and they would start shouting and doing all that kind of stuff, and then it would go to um, the self-proclaimed apostle would share those gifts or impute those gifts to a select few of the the individuals, the teenagers that were out there. And then they would go around to the other ones who were maybe sitting in the back pew, not really knowing, don't want to get their feet wet because they don't really know what's going on. Um, we would go get them and then we would lay hands on them and almost force them to the ground. You, you, you know, I mean, we're all standing around speaking in tongues and and I, I can remember this because this happened to me. You know, I, I was forced to the ground and then I was I, I couldn't get up. You know, wow. all these hands would be laid on me and they'd all be they'd all be speaking in tongues. And you you can't get up until you've had the gift imputed to you. Wow. So That's they're, so they're, scary. They're, right. They're taking the, the reins of uh, of the Holy Spirit and saying that they function in that way, that they can just you have the Holy Spirit, you have the Holy Spirit, you have the Holy Spirit. And if you get up and you're not speaking in tongues, then you don't have enough faith. You don't have the gift. You, you're not one of us. All, all this and all the rest. Are they, are they twisting the Pentecost in that's in Acts two? Is that where they're Absolutely. supposedly getting this from? Okay, because I mean, the letters of Paul are very clear that the Holy Spirit does the choosing of yes. who gets the gifts. That would be more like Simon the sorcerer who was trying okay. to buy the gifts, and that it doesn't work that way. 
And that must have been terrifying for you, Sam, to be held down and have all these people speaking tongues, not the biblical tongues of a foreign language that's understandable, but just, I mean, it's, it, it looks like babbling and, it, and frankly, it looks demonic. Let's say that the gifts of the apostles did continue. And there is such thing as continuationists. There are some people like Piper who have pretty strong arguments on those on, on those particular things. Um, so let's say that they, it, it did continue. From my experience, I can't. I was unable to find an individual that would be worthy of those things because you all you have to do is a simple Berean test and just go to scripture and most of these men up there claiming to be apostles prophets evangelists preachers teachers all of these things don't even line up biblically um, of what a lay person should be a mm -hmm. regular Christian should be much less a teacher of God's word um, they, they claim to be prophets, but they don't even know what the word prophet means. It, most of the time it was just proclaiming God's word, you know, so but they'll take it on. I'm prophetic. I'm speaking, you know, future tense, all this. I got this revelation from from um, from God himself. Not now. You, when I was growing up, it wasn't so much as um, I got this word directly from God. But now, I mean, almost every sermon that um crank opens up with is i received this word from god i either this morning or you know whatever happened to studying god's word to give mm -hmm. the people god's word um it's just whatever my mind told me is yep. now god right that's exactly what i believed when i was deceived in the new age that any thought that i had was from god or god's angels and i would write it down and it would be a book or I would say it and it would be a, a, a speech at a new age workshop. And I don't see any difference with some of the things in these videos of David crank. And then Nicole crank, is that his sister or his wife? His wife. Okay. So Nicole crank is David crank's wife and she calls herself pastor Nicole uh -huh. crank. And, and anyone who knows me has watched my programs know that I really believe that 1 Timothy 2.12 is for today. The boundaries on what women can do in church is a safety guard for both men and women. It's not putting women down. And it has nothing to do with Deborah, who wasn't a pastor. She was a judge or Judith or any of these women in the Bible. It has to do with safety guards. I think it's because Eve was the first one deceived. And when I was in the new age, giving workshops to thousands of people in my audience, it was 90% women. When I was in yoga classes, which is deception, it was 90% women. I just think that we, the so-called fairer sex, were very emotion driven. We're probably more intuitive because we have to talk to our babies before they can talk. And we just get just pulled into these emotion-based scripture twisting false teachings more easily. And so when I see Nicole up there um, saying she's a pastor teaching both men and women, because the Bible says that the women should not have authority mm -hmm. over men. It's fine for women to teach women's Bible study or to teach a youth class. But when they're getting up there in front of men and having authority, uh, I mean, there's a real problem. And then she starts off her, her uh, so-called sermon with she has a word from God which means that she is supposedly on par with the biblical prophets and they're not. I have a word from the Lord, a word from the Lord. And we're probably going to laugh. You're probably going to be shocked and you're probably going to cry. And I'm probably going to do all of them with you. That's why I wore red lipstick to, to distract you from my tearing up running mascara. Because we cannot insert ourselves into our future, but our praise goes into the atmosphere and it begins to rumble and shake things that we cannot see with our eyes as it heads out into our future before us. Especially about the big things. So I just marched my little happy butt up there to the podcast, knowing I am about to suck rotten eggs. <laughs> it's gonna be horrible. And I'm like, God, you're gonna have to help me because I can't do this by myself. And God's up in heaven like, that's hilarious. 
You thought you could do this by yourself. That's right. Yeah, um, they're completely in cahoots with one another. Um, so what, whatever um, he says, she affirms, and whatever she says, he affirms, and, and that's the way. It, and they, they have the same message, um, mm. and it's doctrine of demons. I, that's the, that's mm-hmm. the only way that I can you, you know sum it up quickly. Um, she, uh, they're they're both they're both they're both pretty out there um, in, in in their way of in their way of thinking in their way of uh, approaching scripture in their way of approaching uh, even a, a, a sermon. You, you, you know, um, she's been known to ride elephants up on stage and have snakes around her neck. Um, you, you know, uh, just just these wild behavior that have absolutely nothing to do with the Bible or scripture or Christianity or anything. It's it's entertainment. I mean, yeah, it's, it is. It's it's one fallen head teaching another fallen head. Mm-hmm. That's, that's C.S. Lewis right there, and, and he said it perfectly. Um, and, and they they they've given them the culture. They've given the people what they want. You, you know, they, they mm-hmm. these people come out and they have these itchy ears. Second you know, yep. Timothy chapter four, and they give them exactly what they want. They totally skip over what Paul had said to Timothy was, which was preach the word and in season out of season when it's good when it's not good when when you know people want to hear it when they don't want to hear it always preach the word Be, and they don't they, they don't preach the word they they don't give them you, you know what what god has said they give them what they say what is already in their fallen heart false teachers are the are the worst of the worst i mean they 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 really are um i, I don't believe that there's any other um a higher dishonor that you can give um, to God himself than to say that you speak for him and actually speak for Satan. Yeah, it's so true. And, and it's deeply sad. Uh, it's why we want to pray for these false teachers. We want to pray for their conviction, for them to go back to the Bible and study it. Right. Does, does David Crank Jr. have any sort of seminary training? No, um, not, not, not that I, I remember, n- nothing like that. Um, so it was uh, Senior, Crank Senior was uh, a prior cop. And then he went from being a cop to being a preacher. Um, when he tells a story, he'll, he'll tell it like, I was driving past this piece of property and I, and the, the word of God came to me and said, this is your property and you'll have it and you'll build there and do all this kind of stuff. He's the same old story. You know, God spoke to me audibly, all this, all this stuff. Um, and so he had it and then they, they, they were grooming junior his, his whole life. So they, they kept him away from everything. Um, and if, something would happen it would be all swept underneath the rug and all this kind of stuff um what do you mean if he would get caught doing something that he wasn't supposed to be Mm -hmm. doing it would just get swept under the rug and everyone no one no one was ever allowed to be around senior or junior or um even sharon she 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 couldn't have to a whole lot of friends because they weren't on the inner circle and sharon that was your father's wife Yes. Okay. And um, you had to be on that inner circle because you couldn't let the whole congregation see how you actually live because then the whole sham would be up. But even then, they they didn't care um, too much because I I remember seniors sitting up there and I mean, he would just brag about how many cars he had, how much money. I thank you I have that $1,100. I thank you, Lord, I have that $1,100. Lord, I thank you I have that $1,100. Thank you for that eleven hundred dollars, Lord. Thank you for that eleven hundred dollars, and you're gonna get that eleven hundred dollars. Great blessing will come out of that, and out of that is financial blessing. And that's one of the things the Lord wants to emphasize in these last days and hours that God wants you blessed financially. Say He wants me blessed financially. All right. Remember, people used to ball up money and throw it at him. Yeah, and he would come up there and he would dance on it and you know he would have everyone yell scream money cometh to me now and we would say these affirmations of faith like you're healthy wealthy good looking all these things you, you know just humanism it was it was humanism at its fullest mm-hmm. sprinkled with little bits of 
twisted scripture. Yeah, that's what, when I was listening to some of um, David Crank's um, so-called sermons, he was using a lot of the same languaging of Tony Robbins. And he he really sounded like a motivational teacher. Um, and I didn't hear any proper exegesis of any scripture. Because he can't. He, do, he doesn't know how to. And if he would actually tell people the gospel, they would leave the building because they don't want to hear that. I mean, you, you know, I, and f- quite frankly, I don't think he understands the gospel enough to be able to teach it. Because if he would say it's all built on self-indulgence, self-pride, self-esteem, everything self, you, you know, and if he would say, Jesus Christ said, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me, the building would empty. Mm. How many people go to the church approximately? Um, he claims to have around 10,000 members. Oh, wow. Um, so in his video with the roller coaster, um, he says that we just want to have fun. We're just having a good time. Look at your neighbor at all campuses and say, I'm here to have fun. Uh, it was filmed during the pandemic when admittedly people are kind of depressed and anxious. And and so he, he what he justified the roller coaster was, hey, this is fun. What's wrong with that? It's it's non biblical. Um that that's that you that's the end of discussion right there. It's nowhere in the Bible do you ever see um any servant of God behaving in this way whatsoever. You 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 don't see Jesus Christ going and appeasing to people's wants. You you know, you don't you don't see him going and say, Hey, I'm gonna fight for your guys's rights that are being taken away by Caesar and all this kind of stuff. It's none of that. None of that. It's it's deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Mm-hmm. And if you're not willing to do that, then you're not worthy to be my disciple. And I've noticed also on that, that um, after being saved, getting a new heart, a new life, that I find it fun in, in a kind of a non-entertainment way to listen to our pastor do expository sermons through the books of the Bible and to go line by line and, and really go deep into scripture. I mean, to me, that's great. That's pleasurable. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. I, I, I can remember. So, um, it it was probably, I'd say roughly around 20 to 25 years. I, I was, I had this charismatic word of faith mindset um, so after I got out of uh, uh, Crank's churches and I, I had I had joined the military, and so when I was in the military, I didn't I didn't know who I was as a Christian. I was just going off of what I had been told. You're charismatic. You're word of faith. So I would go around to all these. I've been to TD Jakes um, when I was younger. I've been to Rod Parsley's church. Um, I we would jump churches all around to the new next new exciting thing you, you know so we we were chasing that that fun that excitement that spiritual high that you, you know that that uh we it was almost like we were trying to chase like the the initial feeling whenever you're saved and you have that relief taken off of you but we were chasing it in the wrong absolutely the wrong direction um and that's what we looked for. We, we looked for, you know, fun here and who's going to make me feel good about myself and doing all that. And I can, I can remember I had gotten out of the military and I had met my beautiful wife now, um, Josephine, and um, we, had, we had gotten married. And I, I was wanting to take my family to a charismatic church. And she was like, mm, we're not going to do that at all. Um, so I found myself in a Baptist church. And for a Pentecostal, to yes. you know, say I'm going to a Baptist church. Um, That's a culture shock. Yeah, it, it, it was. But I started to hear the gospel again. Mm-hmm. I started to hear what how, how my dad used to preach, you, you know, from the Bible. And I started to hear the name of Jesus and it's spoken rightly. And I. So I, you didn't I, hear the name of Jesus at the faith church? We would, but it would be like this is what jesus can offer you this is what christianity can offer you again it was it's 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 everyone was 
and even the the teachers were were interested in the byproducts and were teaching the byproducts mm-hmm. of Christianity and not the cross. I don't remember ever, you know, hearing you're a sinner, you need to repent, you you know mm-hmm. all that. It was always straight to the good news. Wow. And, right, you can't get to the good news unless you go through the bad news first and that is you're yeah. a sinner and you need to be saved. You, Amen. you need to repent. Um, so it was just jumping straight into the good news. So all I ever heard was just good, 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 good. This is what you need to do. If you're not getting these things, you don't have enough faith. But I I can remember I, I started to hear the gospel being preached and then one thing led to another. And I ended up at, um, uh, Missouri Baptist university and Providence is a beautiful thing. Um, uh, by his grace and mercy, the Lord had led me there. And there, um, under the teaching of um, my current pastor now, his name is uh, Dr. John Griever, uh, I started to hear Reformed teaching. And I just, I had never been fed like that before. I, I had one class with, with him, with my pastor, and it was discipleship and evangelism. And I had never been discipled before mm. in my life. And I wait. Yeah, that's the Great Commission: is to go and yeah, make disciples. Yeah. What when you're in there and you're a Christian, you're getting brow whipped, um, drugged through the mud, you're malnourished, and if you stand up against and you say anything against the man of God, then you're against God Himself. Um, because I sent you a video of of Dave Crank and uh, Junior, where he says that he has all the apostolic gifts. Um. God has spoken to me for quite some time. Um, I operate, and I always hesitate saying it because it kind of sounds bad, but I'm a prophet of God. And so uh, actually most people would call it apostle because if you're just a prophet, you're just a prophet. If you're just a pastor, you're just a pastor. But when you have an apostolic gift, that apostle means sent one, and it's sent into all these five-fold ministry gifts. So how many of y'all, uh, uh, you know for sure I'm a teacher? Teacher. Yeah. How many of y'all are pretty sure I'm a pastor? Yeah. How many are pretty sure that I've told you things prophetically about God so I operate in the pathetic and the prophetic, right? So that being said, I want to kind of navigate some waters tonight online and sunset and all campuses about what the Lord is saying to me. All five of them. And he goes through them and he's, I prophesied in your life, you're, you know, blah, 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 goes all through these things. And for the lay person sitting out there, what am I supposed to say against an apostle of God? And if I do, everyone sees what happens to them. I mean, it's a real Amish or uh, sci- uh, Scientology way of doing things. If you say something against it at all, you're anathema. Mm-hmm. You are cast out. You are non-existent. And they'll speak from about you from the pulpit. And everyone knows who they're talking about, but they won't name names mm. so that they can stand unguilty. You, you know, they, they weren't of us, so they departed. You know, they're not from mm-hmm. us and all this. And it's, do, do they use that line um, with David and Saul, touch not the anointed? Do they twist that? Oh, yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. Yep. Definitely. They take that. And I mean, it's <laughs> even if they did have an anointing, it's so hard to see past their pride. You 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 can't even you can't even see past that because they're so engulfed in their pride and and they're haughty and they're you, you know they they don't they don't boast uh, about their shortcomings like Paul did and and boast uh, about Christ. They, no they humility. Them, they, yeah, they boast about themselves through and through. Oof. Well, this has been quite a roller coaster of discussion. And is there anything else that you want to mention in this video? I would want to say um, thank you um, for this opportunity to to be able to to uh, share what the what the Lord has done in my life, um, and and I just I want to um, be clear that I had nothing to do with with this. This is the grace of God um, it, that He showed His his mercy and his grace upon me to, to get me out of that, that false way of thinking 
And um, all the praise, honor, and glory be to God. Um, Amen. Forever. All glory to God. Amen, brother. It's a, it's a miracle that we were pulled out of deception. And now I pray that God will use us to help other people out of deception. So thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, absolutely. One soul. I was going to say one soul is a life worth living. If you can be the means to lead one soul to Christ. And so that's that's what I'm praying for for this video, that that, that one soul will come to to uh, know, know Christ or be brought out of that deception um, to to be truly fed um, uh, by, by the word um, and not by someone else's ego.